Hello friends and family and welcome to our Thursday, October 22nd edition of this boring meditation stuff. Uh, we've been talking about truth and yesterday was government. Today I wanted to talk about truth in business, honesty in business. Um, I think in some ways this might be the most far removed from uh, meditation directly. I don't think there's anything much I can say that I haven't already said about how meditation will influence the individual and the individual is all that comprises a business, really. Uh, the corporation isn't the building and it isn't the, the computers or the trucks or whatever other assets you happen to have. It's the people who work there. Um, and it's true for businesses in the same way that it's true for governments. But businesses have uh, a different set of choices. I, I think that for governments, at least as a citizen, it seems obvious that the government should be transparent, as transparent as possible. I would like for every government transaction to be public knowledge. I would like for every government policy to be posted on a website. I would like for the government to use completely transparent technology. So um, open hardware, open software. Um, I, I think that the, the uh, case of Sweden really takes this to sort of another degree where everyone's salary in the entire country <laughs> is public um, because the citizenry are seen as a very important component of the government and that that transparency is important. And once you have that transparency, then it's not a surprise. Then there's, there's nothing magical about um, the transparency being there and it becomes quite boring very quickly um, having started a salary transparent company i can tell you it's very boring nobody goes and checks the spreadsheet once you've looked at it once you know oh, okay yeah so and so gets paid more than me and so and so gets paid less um okay <laughs> that's the information there's all this wondering and all of this curiosity um, for companies that don't have that kind of transparency, companies that really hold on to their secrets tightly. Um, and in the name of competitive advantage, corporations tend to do this. And it may be true in some cases that a corporation will gain advantage by way of a secret. A government, a nonprofit, these things don't require competitive advantage. It doesn't make it sense for them to have trade secrets or data that they keep locked up or software that they keep locked up behind closed licenses and these sorts of things. Um, it's very silly, the notion. And I think that it's actually partly to blame. Uh, on the success of capitalism. Like capitalism is the system by which the world runs, right? And it is a successful system. Everyone uses it to some degree, <laughs> even China. Um, maybe China more than anyone else. Global capitalism is a successful system, but it has baked into it all of these ideas that you have to win, you have to be successful, you have to be competitive. And where competitive means coming out on top. And that embeds in it all of these ideas about secrecy. Um, and those ideas in other contexts don't make any sense. They don't make any sense for government. Um, unless you see your government competing with other governments and on some level, perhaps, but um, that's not really the primary role of government. 
and a secret you keep from other countries, you're very likely keeping from your own citizenry. And it erodes your democracy to have secrets within your government. Similarly for nonprofits. Nonprofits exist for the sake of bettering humanity, providing services without profit goals. So there is no idea of competition between nonprofits. So the secrets for the sake of competition shouldn't exist, but they seem to. They seem to have been carried over from capitalism and oh yes, secrets, <laughs> closed things, hidden things, opaque things, black boxes, that's what we like. Um, and so this is actually a challenge for businesses. Businesses, corporations, can be transparent and some are certainly more transparent than others and it's actually potentially a competitive advantage for the corporation to say okay actually i'm going to release this information right internally or externally um, i'm going to make it available to anyone um, whatever this information happens to be so internally that might be salaries but also externally that might be salaries you might just pull a mini sweden and say oh okay everyone's salaries are just published on a website here download the excel spreadsheet or look at this table and very quickly as it is internally people realize that this information is not that interesting <laughs> there's no there's no big amazing reveal in there. There's no huge dragon. Um, unless you work for a very bad company, the people at the top are not making orders and orders of magnitude more than the people at the bottom. Um, and it is bad companies that tend to prefer to hold on to these sorts of secrets. Oh yes, this person is making 2000% what the person on the factory floor is making. Well. Maybe they shouldn't. <laughs> maybe that's not necessary. Either maybe the person on the factory floor deserves to be paid more um, if you have that much cash flow within the company to pay someone at the top that much. Or maybe the person at the top doesn't need to make quite as much as they do. At least like rein in <laughs> their ego. Um, and I mean, uh, this is this is believed to be the consequence, in my experience, it's not, of transparent salaries, that you'll have this kind of effect. Um, but it is believed to be. Uh, it's more important that the transparency simply be there. If you make salaries transparent internally or externally, and the salaries don't change, even if they seem unfair, at least now people know, they have the information. Um, our imaginations tend to blow things out of proportion. And so in an unfair company or a poorly run company where someone is making uh, this huge, amount and someone on the factory floor is making a tiny amount. The person on the factory floor will assume that the person in the corner office <laughs> is, is making way more than they actually are, usually. Um, it's the same as our other forms of envy and jealousy in our lives that on a personal level, we always imagine that the problems we're having in our friendships and relationships and in family are much worse than they are. That, oh, something terrible is happening and I can't trust this person and this and that. Um, transparency tends to help this. Um, Counterintuitively, it's a sort of balm on the discomfort that comes from unfairness. And there is unfairness around. Corporations 
who, which. Although who also, <laughs> because these corporations are, are, again, built of individuals. But when the individuals and the corporation collectively embrace a transparency which actually frees the corporation of these fears, then you're freed of two things, actually. Mentally, you are free of the fear of being discovered, of having your secrets revealed, and practically, you're freed of this cumbersome, <laughs> this extremely obnoxious process of maintaining these secrets, right? Because if you work for a company where, let's say, let's go back to the salaries example, that salaries are secret between the employees, and especially if the salaries are very secret, very special, that these, they are a trade secret to this corporation. Those are the companies where the employees go for brunch, get each other drunk, and tell each other their salaries. <laughs> we all put it on the table. Okay, we're gonna tell each other our salaries. Um, it always backfires, this desire for secrecy, this fear-based secrecy. And it's important that we acknowledge that fear-based secrets, trade secrets or otherwise, are lies. They are lies of omission. That is what a secret is, a lie of omission. And for corporations to free themselves of telling lies of mission is to give themselves quite a bit more slack in other spaces. If you don't have to think about these sorts of decisions, oh, is this a private thing or is this a public thing? And the tendency, the default, the thing that causes nonprofits and governments <laughs> to choose private things most of the time is that we've embedded this idea in ourselves. And if we can move past that and say, well, actually it was just public, everything public by default, it was just whatever. <laughs> we publish all the reports, we publish all the statistics and we publish our source code, who cares? Um, Those corporations are the ones largely being born now. If you think of a meaningful corporation as having, you know, usually 50 to maybe 150 year long lifespan, that the corporations which look like they have a successful future ahead of them are those which let go of this idea of constantly maintaining lies of omission so that they can survive. And this will be beneficial for the individual. If you can go into a company and you take up a job and you know that it is the principle of the company to avoid lies of omission, to avoid unnecessary secrets, and there are things which need to be kept secret, right? The employee's personal address, home address, that should be a secret. Yeah, okay, passwords, those are inherently secret, right? Um, you're not releasing control of the company to the wild and just, oh, okay, let the animals rip it and tear it apart. You use rationality to make these decisions, um, but it's, often surprising the things that you can publish totally harmlessly. They don't affect the business one way or the other. As it turns out, the rest of humanity has better things to do than pick apart every little article and doodad that a corporation publishes, particularly small ones. And so that makes it easy to begin new companies in this way, rather than trying to retrofit transparency to old cumbersome companies. I mean, I have no delusions about 
you know, the startup economy and all of that. Um, <laughs> startups aren't going to save us, but um, transparency, where it can be baked in, kind of gives these companies that leverage for free. Oh God, I used the word leverage. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, and then, as I was saying, a new employee who comes there knows that honesty, that pursuit of the truth, even if it's somewhat uncomfortable to, for the company overall, perhaps, though often not, surprisingly not, um, that they can behave in the same way. They can be honest within the office. They can be honest about their intentions. They can be honest about who they are. Um, and I think that in general, that will make for a better world for us when people begin behaving that way by default. Uh, it'll probably take a few generations, <laughs> but um, perhaps it's coming. Uh, tomorrow, I'll, I'll be um, beginning to close up this little series on truth um, with uh, returning back to the idea of personal truth. And um, that should be the end. So uh, I hope you're all taking good care of yourselves and taking good care of everyone around you in your company and elsewhere. Um, and I will talk to you tomorrow. Goodbye.